My name is Carl Pearson. I'm an attorney defending homeowners facing foreclosure. And in this video, I'm going to explain how churches or a group of churches in any town or area can solve the foreclosure problems for the church members instead of waiting for help from any governmental programs. The economy is not getting better, as everyone can see, with higher food and oil prices and an ever-increasing concentration of the economy into fewer hands, with no significant increase in jobs after the U.S. government has handed trillions of dollars over to the nation's banks. So let's not worry about the banks receiving any money. Let's worry about the homeowners and what's happening to them. So let's be realistic. The economy is getting worse for 98% or more of Americans and government is obviously not coming to our aid and will not as long as our elected officials are multi-millionaires themselves or seeking re-election with campaign contributions and now other massive campaign expenditures by billionaires. Yet, there is an existing institution that can be used as a substitute for our non-responsive government. This is the nation's churches, synagogues, and mosques which, to simplify what I say, I'll now refer to as churches. Let me explain what I have in mind. First of all, there is no need for any new legislation. We don't have to go to the crooks and ask them to pass any statutes to obtain relief through the nation's churches. The nation's major Christian churches had a membership of about 127 million people in the year 2004, and there are about 7 million synagogue members and 2 million mosque members, for a total of 136 million church members. Now, assuming $750 a year in contributions per member, the churches have combined annual income of about $100 billion and assets of more than $1 trillion, which is a formidable group if they can be encouraged to come to the aid of their own members. By coming to the aid of their members, the churches can build their membership and prevent financial destruction for many of their members, which will undoubtedly be followed by higher annual giving. But this isn't why the churches should do what I'm now going to propose. Instead, they should do this because it is the right and almost obvious thing for the churches to do. The nation's churches need to step in when government fails its citizens which is what is happening today when the government has been taken over by the rich and for the rich. What I'm proposing is that the nation's churches take over the governmental function of dealing with predatory banking practices already causing millions of Americans to lose their homes. If government won't stop these predatory practices, the nation's churches can and should. And even in one area, the churches in a single area where a single church can do it for its members. Now here are some important facts and some laws I need to tell you about before I discuss my main idea. One, the nation's banks are required by contract law to negotiate loan modification agreements in good faith, but are not doing so because few homeowners have been able to go into court to enforce this right. Two, in 27 states, the banks are able to foreclose on homes without starting any foreclosure action in court. And in the other 23 states, the banks start foreclosure actions, but homeowners generally fail to defend them for reasons including the inability to pay for a lawyer. Homeowners earning $10 to $15 an hour and behind in their mortgage payments for six months after having been stripped of their money by the predatory practices of the bank aren't able to pay lawyers $225 an hour to stop the foreclosure, so they don't defend, they let it go by default. Three, federal, state, and local governments have done nothing or almost nothing to help homeowners who are threatened with loss of their homes through foreclosure. Four, banks require that homeowners have enough monthly income to pay a reduced note and mortgage and are denying loan modification agreements because homeowner applications show $100 to $500 less than the monthly income required by the bank to offer a loan modification agreement to the homeowner applicant. Five, towns are the most appropriate source of funds to supply the additional monthly income to pay the revised mortgage for threatened homeowners by reason of the town's receipt of real estate tax payments 
of about $150 to $600 per month from the homeowner and or bank as to the homeowner's mortgage property. But the towns are doing nothing to help their financially troubled homeowners even though they have the, they have the money coming in to do so. Six, ideally, residents of a town have an interest in having the town provide financial support to some of the financially troubled homeowners to stop perhaps half of the foreclosures and enable the homeowners to have breathing time required to turn around their situation, which itself could be done in a variety of ways if given sufficient time to the troubled homeowner. Towns would benefit by reducing foreclosures and distress sales and reducing foreclosure blight and abandoned properties and the resulting declines in land values and real estate taxes to be collected from such properties. And other social costs, of course, have to be added in. 7. Churches in a town are similar to the local government and could function in lieu of the local government because a. First of all, they operate in a tax-free environment similar to the town, which gives them a cost advantage over for-profit entities trying to do the same thing. B. They represent perhaps 50% fifty, perhaps of the residents in the town. C. They are already established and can begin immediately without any substantial organizational or money-raising problems or delays. D. They have regular meetings of their members, far more than the town has through its town meetings with residents, and can get their members to act through the church, even though the members as citizens can't get their own uh, town to act for them. E. They have a source of predictable income from their members and can be expected to obtain increased amounts of income under appropriate circumstances. F. The churches would increase their membership and revenues by taking over what should be the town's function of supporting homeowners in their dealings with the banks. G. The churches would have a lien on the property to ensure that the church gets repaid when it makes this subsidy that I'm talking about. H. The church can be more effective in reaching local residents than the government or the local media, which haven't done anything at all to help own homeowners up to this time. I. The churches in a town can be an effective institution to compel the banks to enter into the needed loan modification agreements or face lawsuits by the church group on behalf of their injured church members, which the church group, using the contributions from hundreds or thousands of church members, could afford to commence and pursue to a conclusion, perhaps for 10 or 20 homeowners in a single lawsuit. J. A number of new jobs would be created by the church group to protect their members from the banks, credit card companies, and student loan lenders, which would be made available to local residents and be meaningful, valuable jobs for the town residents. K. The greater the population of a town or city, the more difficult it would be to create a program to protect homeowners from the illegal activities of the banks. The banks buy off the large governments, but wouldn't be able to do this as to 40,000 towns and villages throughout the country. The towns and villages are still free to use their resources to stop predatory lending, whereas the federal government, the 50 states, most if not all of the counties, and most if not all large cities have already sold out to the banks and related interests. I. Within large cities, the church groups could become the equivalent of a town for purposes of helping homeowners instead of waiting for the city to do anything, to enable homeowners in large cities to obtain relief that is more practicable to obtain in a small town. And M, there is a precedent for this. In 1815, the first insurance company got started when a group of churches got together and agreed to pay widows of deceased Scottish pastors a regular stipend by having each of the churches agree to make a small monthly payment for each Scottish widow. The cost of commencing a lawsuit on behalf of some of the homeowners is the comparable insurance component for the church group. Now that I have given you these facts and some relevant law, I can now talk about my plan. Here is the plan. One or more, and hopefully all, of the churches in an area, such as a town or village, should get together into a mortgage uh, support church group. The churches will advise their respective members about the help that the mortgage support church group will provide to homeowners having trouble with their mortgages. The support to be offered is 
and I'm going to list seven items. One, developing and applying standards for offering monthly payments to the bank to support the application by a homeowner member for a loan modification agreement. The support would range from $1 to $350 per month or some other figure determined by each church separately and be based on standards fairly applied so that the maximum number of homes can be saved from foreclosure through the application of, of standards on a fair basis. Two, if the bank refuses to accept a reasonable monthly subsidy from the mortgage support church group, the group would bring suit on behalf of the homeowner to enjoin foreclosure and to eliminate the bank's claim of an enforceable interest in the property under various available legal doctrines such as not as the bank not having the original note or having no valid assignment of the note and mortgage or having securitized the loan with several possible claims uh, that result from securitization. Three, providing paralegal support to the attorney representing the church group and homeowners to reduce the cost of legal services and to provide jobs for members of the church group. Four, work with all members of the church group to find homeowners having financial trouble. One tip-off might be a reduction in contributions to the church by a member. And to prepare and submit loan modification applications to the bank in appropriate cases. Five, providing a comparatively large financially sound effective institution for going up against the banks to obtain what the banks are illegally refusing to provide to a significant number of the homeowner members of the church group, which would probably cause the bank in future instances to grant loan, uh, loan modification applications when submitted by the church group on behalf of its financially troubled homeowner members. Six. Once the church group has established its program for helping homeowner members with their mortgage problems, the church group can turn its attention to credit card debt problems, particularly when the banks are charging 31% interest and obtaining their money at one half of 1% interest, and then look at student loan problems as well. And finally, seven. Upon email request of any interested church, I will be happy to send a free copy of my e-booklet, How to Get Rid of Your Unwanted Debt, to show you what can be done to eliminate debt for church members. My name is Carl E. Pearson, that's spelled P-E-R-S-O-N. I'm interested in helping any church or group of churches to set up a mortgage support program for church members anywhere in the United States please call me at 212-307-4444 or send an email to me at carlpurse2 at gmail.com. That's C-A-R-L-P-E-R-S-2, the number 2, at gmail.com. My telephone number, once again, is 212-307-4444. I look forward to your call. Thank you.